Hey, this is Mr. Lavery, um, and this week we're going to be talking about muscle, bone, and joint injuries. Um, so if we don't see an accident happen, um, but somebody calls for help or something alerts us, so if we hear it, we should definitely check the scene. Um, we don't want to become part of the problem, and we don't want to make the problem worse. So our safety comes first, my safety comes first, and then we, w we don't want to do further harm. And when we're approaching the a person who, and we think they've been in an accident, we always want to approach from their eyes. We want to look right at them. And we, the first thing we want to say is do not move. Okay. I say do not move because we don't want them to get further hurt if they do move. And we want to check the scene. So if there's a car accident, you know, um, want to look both ways, want to look up, want to look down, make sure we don't get hit by power lines, we don't step in a ditch or fall off. Um, I've heard that happen, seen it happen. Um, we don't want to get hit by a car. Um, so checking the scene is we're looking out for our safety and make sure the situation is not worse. And then when we're approaching the scene, we're trying to approach from the front of the car, or if the person's on the ground, from their point of view, and we tell, do not move. Then we're looking for signs and symptoms. So if a person's holding their arm, like this child there, and there's pain, swelling, bruising, an inability or unwillingness to move the injured body part um, where the body part is bent, crooked, or otherwise deformed, um, then it's probably a bone break. If there's popping or snapping feeling or sound at the time of injury, or graining feeling or sound when moving the injured body part. And this happens. Um, my daughter actually broke both of her arms earlier in 2020. It was a heck of a year. One, she was going past the moon bounce. And a kid flew off the moon balance feet first and hit her and broke her arm. Um, and her body part um, was a little bit deformed. And that, and she she felt like she heard a snap. So we weren't sure if it happened um, when on impact or when she fell. And then there was definitely pain, swelling, and bruising. My, my wife saw it happen and knew right away that it was a broken bone. And when you see it happen... And when we look at what happened, we call that the mechanism of, inj mechanism of injury. And that means what happened. So, and then another time, my daughter's tried standing on a soccer ball, you know, like a bear on a ball in a circus. It doesn't work. She fell right off. Um, and she landed weird. And we weren't sure if that was broken or not. But then she had an inability to move the injured body part. So we, we knew she broke a bone. So. When we see those signs or symptoms, we want to tell the person not to move, okay? And we call 911 right away, or we have to decide if we're going to move them ourselves. Um, so for both of the situations with my daughter, we we took her to the ER, Bryn Mawr ER. They have a good pediatric unit. And then after the first time, actually, we took her right to DuPont's emergency care. Um and definitely, you know, if we see the bone protruding through the skin, we would have called 911. Um, if we see any of those signs and symptoms, we should tell the person not to move. And if, depending on the mechanism, mechanism of injury, you definitely want to call 911. Okay. If, especially if it's a leg, you know, or a femur, or a major bone break, or a severe car accident, we want to call 911 and go for an ambulance ride because we don't want to further injure the person. We'll talk about the head, neck, or spine following week. Um, also, if the person's going into shock, we want to call 911 because sometimes bone breaks lead to internal bleeding um, or blunt trauma leads to bone break and, lead, and that's in, leads to internal bleeding and the person could be going into shock. And again, the cause of the injury, the mechanism of, of injury leads us to believe there's going to be multiple issues with this person. Okay. So, like I said, um, we just want the person to rest. We don't want to move them if we, unless we have to, unless the scene is not safe or we need to get to another body part. Um, and we want to have the person rest without moving or straightening. If the person can tolerate it, we can put a cold pack on not directly on the skin, use a paper towel or towel between the cold pack and the body part. But if we are in a safe place, like in our neighborhoods, we do not have to splint the injured body part. 
All right. So quite frankly, yeah, if somebody's hurt in a sporting event and they broke a leg, there's no reason to move that person. I've had to do it. I've picked a person up and brought them off the field. You know, we have to, I was their coach. We have to think, you know, who's responsible for this person? Do we have consent? So we check the scene, we look for mechanism of injury. We're looking at signs and symptoms, but remember we have to get consent. And the big thing is not to move the person. Okay. Um, what we want to follow is rice. Now this is different than the physical therapist rice. This is rest, immobilize, cold, and elevate. All right. Write that down. Rest, immobilize, cold, and elevate. Rest. Just have them sit there. Rest there. Um, immobilize. All right. So if we do have to move them, we want to stabilize the injured part, body part with an elastic bandage or splint. And that's what some of the lessons we're going to have to look at this week. So who's going to want to know how to splint? You know, if you're a camp counselor, if you're a hunter, you're in fishing, you're in industry, you know, where you're not near emergency care. Cold. Apply cold pack wrapped in thin dry towel to the area. No more than 20 minutes on and then 20 minutes off. 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off. What that's going to do is reduce the inflammation. So when there's a bone break, blood's rushing to that scene. That's putting pressure on the nerves that causes pain. We want to reduce that swelling and pain. We just want to slow it down. The body has to heal, but it's got, we want to reduce the swelling. Okay. Elevate. Now, if we can move the body part, like if it's an arm or a leg and we can move the body part without causing more pain, we want to elevate it. Um, to re- that will also reduce the swelling. But remember, it comes back to our safety comes first. And we don't want to do any further harm. So you're only doing a mobilization or elevation if it's not going to cause further pain or further harm. And we have to move the person. Okay. So again, if you don't have to move the person, let them rest if the scene is safe. Okay. So there's a couple things you need to know. Rice, mechanism of injury. I've said that's what causes the injury. Um, Remember, our safety comes first and we don't want to do any further harm. So in this unit, we're going to look at immobilization and inflammation and using cold. All right. Have a good week. And if you have a question, message me.